Sith, Sith, Sith. Well, hi there, I'm Future Boss. Um, hope you're having a good week. Um, I received a word from God when I was in Africa about that it's the whole duty of man to keep his commandments, to fear God and keep his commandments. And uh, that was the word that I got in an African church when I attended on Sunday, which again, um, I was out speaking about the Ten Commandments in a school bride and uh, a woman, a Christian, I gave her that word and uh, she wasn't arguing with me but she was trying to find a way around it as most people normally do when they're told that they, they got to keep the Ten Commandments through faith in Jesus Christ, that's the testimony of the saints in the book of Revelation, just accept it, just admit you're a sinner let the Holy Spirit write his commandments on your heart and mind as it says about the new covenant in Jeremiah as it tells us in the book of Deuteronomy as it tells us in the book of Hebrews as it tells us in 1 Corinthians um, that the Lord will write his commands on our fleshly hearts and breathe the understanding that is a dimension of the Holy Spirit the spirit of understanding to actually enable you to actually keep these commandments through faith in Yeshua, the Messiah. Now, I myself am not free from sin. I'm not saying that. I'm not telling you to follow me. Okay? What I'm telling you is a righteous and true word from the Lord God Almighty that the lunar Sabbaths, that the new moons and Sabbath days were the original Sabbaths that Israel kept. There is suffice evidence of that in the Bible obviously in the Bible, first of all, and other books. But what we have, of course, is um, a departure from keeping the Ten Commandments by the Pharisees. Um, probably the Essens were the, the group that closely kept the Ten Commandments, argued that they were part of the Zadok priesthood, which uh, were the righteous priesthood, and the Pharisee priesthood at the time um, was largely mixed up, um, but only... The high priest, remember, um, John the Baptist's father was the high priest. Um, and then um, the office was passed to John the Baptist, who was a Levite. But he was actually called by God. Um, so that, so he um, was the Elijah, that, that Jesus Christ actually told people that he was the Elijah. And that they had to receive his baptism, basically. And that's it, and that's what he said. And um, John the Baptist consequently witnessed that people have to receive the Holy Spirit baptism, which will come later, which he himself can't give. So each of them are witnessing about one another. And Jesus Christ said about John the Baptist that the greatest in the kingdom of heaven is one who teaches and keeps the Ten Commandments. So in this generation today, um, please take this word seriously. This is the, of course, end time Elijah ministry, as if you didn't know, because the one that calls the hearts of the children to the fathers and the fathers to the children, lest God smites the earth, earth with a curse. How many of you are involved in that last day's end time Elijah ministry, I wonder? Um, one that actually does help the orphan, called to help the orphan. Yes, you're on international. Yes, that's what we're about. Um, that's one of the aspects that, of course... I'm asking for your prayers. I'm saying, okay, how are we going to fulfill this commission? It's not just about um, helping widows. These widows have got to be involved in a community and preaching the word um, and basically pass on the knowledge of these Ten Commandments to the next generation. And only Yeshua International, um, but by a, a handful maybe of other ministries in the entire world, are actually about this end time Elijah ministry. If you haven't worked out already, then what are you doing? There's a lot of ministries that, of course, I support, um, that, I, that I do recommend on, on my channel on YouTube. You see all the links I have to the different ministries that I see that people are getting um, words from God. But um, are we actually involved in you know, the, this end time ministry and helping Yeshua and International not only teach and keep the Ten Commandments, but actually help orphans and um, and widows as well. And I can only think of, you know, sometimes um, I only just get, uh, God reminds me that um, it's through his grace and not my works that I'm saved. Um, and it's through Christ's blood that I'm, my sins are atoned for. 
but um, to actually know the new covenant is, I believe, to actually live the Ten Commandments and not to break them. Okay. Now John did say that we have an advocate in heaven if we do and if we come to breaking them. If Satan um, sends his demons uh, or temptations our way, and it, it, it comes that we actually um, falter, then we should wash ourselves in the water of the words. That's by repenting, by giving a testimony of Jesus Christ, but also, um, well, that's that's it generally. But knowing that He has done the work, and that all we have to do is receive from Him. And uh, there is actually blessings in keeping the Ten Commandments. Um, God says that there is adequate prosperity for those who keep His commandments, fear Him and keep His commandments. That's the whole duty of man. And again, that was the word I was given at the African church when I attended on Sunday. Um, we should be looking for the Lord to, um, to, to tell us that He's pleased with us, rather than men who will tell us that continually that they're pleased and they're they're this and they're that, they're very happy but at the end of the day are they really teaching and keeping the Ten Commandments, well that's the word that the Lord has given me today, um, take the new moons and sabbaths to prayer I would urge you to do that and of course check out the videos on Yahweh's Torah and um, Sabbath days playlists may the Lord bless you, thank you for listening well just a couple of pictures that I thought you would enjoy uh, when I've been out, it seems like spring now even though it's summer but um, I generally think that we're a few weeks, even a month behind in the seasons now. But uh, we see this beautiful picture of uh, the bluebells coming out uh, that we do get in uh, Scotland. And um, we see that little slug there, down there slurping away, um, you know, eating that beautiful uh, stem, that beautiful plant. And uh, we're the ones, of course, that are above it and we can see the beauty of it. In other words, we have a full picture of um, what we're looking at, um, what flower it is we're looking at, but the pest or the slug that's um, below it is only interested in um, feeding itself from it. And today it just seems to be like that in uh, Christendom and much of Messianic Judaism that they're just using the beauty, um, the fullness of um, God's love and commandments and uh, everything and they're not teaching them properly keeping them properly at the same time they're actually um, using it to feed themselves and uh, Apostle Paul did warn us that in the last days there would be people that would do this of course on a larger scale um, we're talking about the world that God put us in um, to basically understand it to look after it um, to be kings and queens or at least stewards of it and uh, now it just seems that um, we've just completely lost control, completely lost the desire to please God, and consequently, um, you know, our world is suffering. Um, the plants, the animals, and so on. Genetic engineering is killing um, plants and animals now, and people, and the, the general curses that are going out for not keeping the Ten Commandments are being felt all around the world now. And uh, I guess the so, only thing we can do as believers is look up to heaven. And uh, Jesus told us that when these things start to happen, to expect our deliverance, that our deliverance is near. Our redemption is very close. So we should uh, rejoice, not at um, the doom and gloom, of course, and all the wickedness that's going on around us, but of the fact that Jesus promised that he would deliver us from it through his blood. And we have to die ourselves as martyrs, or we are delivered in a rapture, then um, we just got to rejoice that the end times are here and uh, that Jesus is coming back very soon.